Hi guys, I'm Tuvalu and this is Blue Lips Ladywood Phase 2. The chapter is just is a way for me to kind of explain the feeling and the vibe of that section in the album, you know, kind of a journey that I'm taking you on. Light Beams, which is the first chapter, is the part where life is carefree, no consequences to whatever actions or weird, stupid stuff I get into. It's that time when there's nothing wrong about this new person that's in your life. All the little things that maybe later on becomes things that you find annoying, you absolutely love. <laughs> and uh, it's a beautiful, naive moment. And it's something that, you know, you, that's what like makes you hold on to someone. No matter how the relationships have gone, like I always will remember and appreciate that time with someone. Disco tits, which is a state of mind, I believe, uh, it came around, <laughs> um, it was Coachella. I was wearing this see-through top where it looked like a disco ball had just exploded onto my boobs. It was just actual like mirrors that like glued onto this transparent thing. The new love of my life, uh, we were walking to some other show and I kind of got stuck looking up at the beautiful rainbow lit trees. He just looks back at me and he goes, hey disco tits, let's go. And I just, it just stuck in my head, I'm like, oh my god, that's me right now. I brought that uh, title into the studio and um, that's how the song came about. Probably one of the most carefree and happiest songs that I've ever written, because usually there's always that little feeling of darkness in most of my songs, whereas this one might be about kind of destructive behavior, but it has no destructive outcome in the song. My favorite lyric in Disco Tits is probably, uh, I'm fully charged, nipples are hard, ready to go. <laughs> Says a lot. She don't know, but she knows is about a, it's a triangle drama where I was seeing someone that I didn't know was seeing someone else already. He had a girlfriend and I found out by running into them and I made clear, you know, I had no idea that you even had a girlfriend. It was a whole whole thing. Anyway, uh, the song is about kind of her choice to deny what is actually going on and stay with him and how that is sometimes the easier way out first for people than to want the truth. But I am the opposite. I always want the truth. Shivering Gold, I would say is just like sexual happiness and freedom <laughs> and uh, singing about um, yeah when like uh, love and sex is at its, at its best. My favorite lyric in that is, well let me just think, wait, 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 wait. Isn't it better the physical face, taking your body, I sit on your face. And it's like a very like kind of shiny, happy, beautiful melody. So <laughs> you see people listen to it and they go, wait, <laughs> I love doing that stuff. <laughs> don't Ask, Don't Tell, I think is my first ballad, really, I feel like. It's kind of when you get to that point where I'm at an age now, like when I date someone, we both have history. I feel like this person is my first love, but he's not, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm not his first love, and you both have baggage, and you have scars, and you've been through shit. You're trying to navigate through all that and not repeat your own mistakes, and you want a clean slate with a new person. So it's about trying to navigate through that. Stranger, this is the one of the first songs I ever wrote, actually. A song that came together a very drunken night at 3 a.m. in Stockholm when we were in Ollie's living room in his apartment and just kind of like singing about trying to find someone to bang in the club. <laughs> it's all funny games, but then it gets to a point where like, is it because I don't want to feel lonely or is it because I'm just enjoying myself? And that kind of creeps in there as well. Cause you're my last hoping And I don't care what you do Leave my heart open I'm gonna leave it for you You can walk on it I wanna hurt feeling you Take the edge of it Just take the edge of it You know you're being destructive but it somehow makes you locate the pain and numbs it kind of in the same way. Maybe that doesn't make sense but it makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches! <laughs> yeah. Bitches is my cheeky nod to what if girls sing a song like this, <laughs> with this kind of lyric. I feel like, you know, no one raises an eyebrow when uh, dudes do. My favorite lyric is, all the girls stare at me, drop lip, dripping in harmony like fifth. 
because I do a little shout out to Fifth Harmony that I'm a fan of. <laughs> Pitchback is just the kind of final chase for that rush or, you know, the, the end of it where uh, the come down, the breakup, the, the end of something that kind of leaves you feeling empty and just out of emotions, really. Romantics is that kind of, you're still on the stage, you're trying to hold on to something that isn't there anymore. We could have been so great together, but a reality is different than the dream. The one feature on this album, which is uh, with Daya, who is an amazing guy, amazing artist, great writer and a good friend of mine. The chorus is that kind of like the dream and trying to hold on to something that isn't there anymore. And my verse is more about the reality of what actually then happened. I think my favorite line is, is uh, the chorus line, like, we could be romantics for life, because there's something just kind of haunting in that that I, um, that I like. Cycles. I wrote together with Joe Janiak, who also wrote Vibes With um, from Ladywood. It's a song about kind of admitting to being, I guess, a love junkie, just kind of falling in and out of relationships and uh, being a bit reckless with, with that. I'm in a cycle, don't mean we ain't true, just cause I talk about the things I've done before you. Cause I like that, cause it goes back to like, just because I've been in love before, doesn't mean that I'm, you know, loving you now. Struggle is the angriest song on the album. I wrote that on my birthday two years ago. I was hurting a lot from this um, uh, relationship I was in and was really struggling with uh, uh, understanding what was going on and why I was falling apart. But at the same time, I was feeling so frustrated with myself for letting it get to me so much when I have so many things in life that are amazing and many people that are amazing. It's kind of, you know, the, the chorus lyric being the struggle is real when it's, you know, I feel like I, you know, brought that on myself and that it really shouldn't be this hard, I guess. 9th of October started as a poem that I actually wrote later that night, also on my birthday. It's a big, <laughs> big day for me. It's about two people having this insane passion, but completely just uh, tearing each other apart. Passion, you know, always ends in pain. And I feel like it's probably the most vulnerable one where I do admit to, you know, also making mistakes in it, not only blaming the other person. Yeah, I walked into the studio, I have this poem, and I kind of just read it up to them, like in the phrasing that I had it. Like, just sing a note that feels good. We never had coffee table books, all sing. Oh, well, we never had coffee table books, all dinner parties. That phrasing and that melody, and they found the chords kind of following me, definitely started with the lyric as, as the bass for it. Bad Days is a song I wrote together with um, Gustav, who plays keyboards with me. And we were on tour with Maroon 5, with my little studio set up, like kind of hiding out in one of the corners and recording this based on a conversation that me and him had a couple nights before, which was about trying to, you know, coexist with someone you've just broken up with and like, you know, sharing all the same friends and trying to be out in the same clubs and bars and seeing each other and not, you know, being affected by that. Yeah, he basically just heard me singing it and he was like, oh, can I, can I listen? And he was like, oh, please let me, you know, do a production on this. And, and he just killed it and made it really unique and awesome. Hey You Got Drugs is the one song on the album with a female producer, which is Alex Hope. She is uh, amazing. I came into the session with her, never met her before, and she just goes, so how are you? And I fully start crying just in front of her. She's like, well, I feel like we should, what do you, whatever you needed to get out of you today, let's work with that. And she just like, I guess, came up with these chords based on my tears. This whole chapter feels very vulnerable to, to me and talking about it is, is um, a bit weird, um, but I'm good at you know embracing my flaws and my sometimes destructive behavior, but not really admitting that I might need to change and that it can um, have some really bad consequences if I'm not careful. My favorite lyric from Hey You Got Drugs is Probably that like outro section. Hey, you got drugs? Just need to pick me up. Only for tonight. Don't tell anyone I was with you. Take it if you want. Think I'm falling out of my feelings. Because I think it just tells the whole story of just being numb, trying to um, party the pain away. It's my journal, pretty much, you know. Sometimes how you, what you feel is sometimes bigger than how you act, if that makes sense. And I think that's, that's very true for this record. It's like, all the emotions are very extreme, it's a very dramatic record and it's, it's like a chaos, but there's a thought behind that.
It's a long f***ing album, man. <laughs> <laughs>